everybody. Okay, so about, well, before, the, before Corona lockdown, uh, I had no visions that I would be getting a product like this. And today it arrived, and I'll explain the reasons why I got it and my thoughts, uh, because nothing's gonna surprise me right now with, with the way the world has gone, it's unbelievable. Affected you? Um, yeah. You're yeah. loving it off of school. This is the little pouch for it. This came first, which was useless without all the rest of the bits. But anyway, it's a mobile power station. Did you yawn? Maybe. Did he yawn? It's a mobile power station powered by a solar panel, which is this. And this is from a company called EcoFlow, which I think are US based, uh, but it, was, it came from uh, their local support, I think it's in Holland actually, the local company. It's an 85 watt solar panel. So we're gonna set this solar panel up. We're gonna connect it to the EcoFlow power unit. Um, it's called the River 370. So we'll unbox it. I gotta say, the boxing, it's not bad. Nice little handle here, you know, integrated into the box. The packaging itself isn't bad. This is the uh, main piece there. I mean, it's not gonna change the way that you run your power in your house, but if you have a blackout, you'll be able to run, I don't know, your modem, you'll be able to charge your phones, you run your laptops, probably run the TV, wi all the essential stuff, Wi-Fi, which is the modems, all the essential stuff that you would wanna run, and a light or two, you know, just until the power comes back on. Now, it's, it's happened very rarely over here in the UK, lucky, lucky to say, but there's always that one chance, or twice, you never know. With all the stuff that's going on, who knows? So without further ado. Let's get straight into it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how much that has got when it comes out of the box, how much charge it's got. So let's do this. I reckon it'll have 50. That's a bet. You want to bet? You want to bet? I don't bet. You don't bet? What do you mean don't bet? I, 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 bet, you by the, I bet you by the end of the day I can get you betting. I bet you can't. So what do I say? So you're going 50%. I'm going to say 20%. All right, it's a bit. All right, good job. Okay, so let's first unbox this and see how much power this has. This is how it comes. Nice box, black version. It looks like they do different colored versions. They do rose gold, silver, black, gold, and moon gray, okay. This is the UK version, as you can see, but they also do it in uh, Euro and US. Let's just get this open and see how much charge it's got and who's won the bet. Okay. Oh, I hate your styrofoam. It's okay. Just a little package of all the bits, I suppose. There you go. And it says, Charge me now. Before you read any further, please charge River to 100%. Okay, so we'll give that a try. Nicely packaged. It feels nice, does that? It's heavy, but it, yeah, it does. Quality stuff. Yeah. Okay, so on here you can see you've got your uh, UK plugs, your AC outlets. Uh, you've got one here, which I think is your cigarette lighter style. <laughs> and on this side, you've got your visual display and all your connections. So these two, will allow you to connect via uh, USB-C and these ones are your standard USBs which are fast charging and standard charging. And the thing? I made a noise, 29! 29% everybody! Who was closest, me? I said 20! Did you? I won the bet! Let's have it! Okay, so we've given it a little bit of a charge I uh, may have cheated a little bit because what you can do with this, and it's excellent, is on the front, there's two USB-C ports. And what they allow you to do is charge it through both ports at the same time. So I had it charging through the solar panel, which is the 85 watt solar panel, which was getting anywhere between seven watts and 80 watts, depending on when the sun came out. Uh, and when it went cloudy, it obviously went very much less powerful. So. That could take you a long time to, uh, to charge it. But do you know what? At least you've got the option. And I think I can also charge it by the um, cigarette lighter come from the car. So if it really came to it and I needed petrol power, then I could charge it that way as well. So let's have a look at the accessory box, Charles. Okay. And see what is in there. By the way, we started doing this at one o'clock, the charging, and it's now Five, quarter past, past five. five. 
and it's charged to 94%, so, and it started at 29%. They do actually say in the instructions that uh, for, for the safety of the battery and for shipping, it comes with um, only a third of its battery power or something like that, I read. There's some more instructions there. Uh, the solar panels are waterproof in as much as they're rainproof. You couldn't put them under water because that wouldn't work very well. But uh, yeah, waterproof. The bag looks cool. I haven't tried this yet. Seems like it's going to fit nice. So what we got? We got like some weird cigarette lighter cable. Okay, into so that's... Into a, a USB-C. So this is the cigarette lighter and it goes onto this side in here. And you just plug that in and that's got a USB-C so you could charge from that way, or you could do it the other way and charge this device from your car. So that's pretty cool. So that's the American Ooh. connection, and that one there just slides, I guess. Yeah. That's a 60 watt charger um, with USB C out of the back of this. And yeah, so that's nice. So uh, a few things. The cables that it comes with are really nice and long. So that's a good plus point. Uh, the charger, you could actually buy two of these to charge it really quickly. So it charges quite quick anyway. What we haven't tried yet is actually charging anything from it. And we'll see how long that lasts. But we'll try the basic things that you would need in an emergency situation. Lights power for, for something. We'll figure that out, whether it's your phone or whatever. The cable that comes with the EcoFlow 85 watt solar panel is uh, really long as well. It's five meters long. So the solar panel can be outside and this device can be inside, which is obviously where you want it. The other nice thing is that you can charge this as well as be charging from it at the same time. Uh, and it gives you all the information you need on the front panel here. So it tells you how much is going in, how much is charging, and how much is coming out at the same time. So yeah, that's really uh, nice and very cool. Two plug sockets, as I say, so AC adapters. So in terms of charging times, and what they say on here is that with a 60 watt charger, which this is, with, one of, with two of them, it will charge in under three hours, the entire unit. The charging time from the car, if you're gonna do it with the car one, is under seven hours. And if you were going to charge it from using both USB-Cs, that would be less than three hours as well from two wall chargers. They do recommend that you store this with your charger co connected so that it's always ready during a blackout, which is okay. And it says it actually maintains the battery better that way. We're going to now test it with a few other devices to see what it's like in the real world. But for us, the big thing here, as I said at the beginning of this video, I never even thought that I would get something like this. Didn't even enter my mind, especially with a solar panel. But what I didn't want to have uh, is a powered unit, like a, one of these petrol generators. This is nice and clean, it's smooth, it's not very big, it's, um, it's not that heavy. It's just really nice the way that it works. And it feels it, really quality. It, yeah, it does. It's clean energy. It uses solar panels, so you can charge it in so many different ways. So if you had a complete blackout and you got no power for a few days, we can still run. And that was the big thing that I was thinking, if the country can go down so quickly, if the world can go down and collapse so quickly with people not working, money's a problem. Uh, if there was a blackout as well, it would be mayhem. So this is really, a backup emergency power solution for us. And it could double up as you know something if we ever go for a long picnic somewhere or on the beach, you could take it with you and you can charge all your devices if you needed to. So at the moment, very pleased with what we've seen and uh, well, let's have a look at the other stuff. So the first one we're gonna try is this. Because dad really needs it. Yeah, I'm gonna try the hairdryer. And I really don't think this is gonna work. So I'm gonna start it off on cold setting and see what happens because clearly I need to, uh, I need to get my hair dry. The unit is 300 watts constant power and it can accept up to 600 watts in a surge. So I really don't expect this to work, but let's see. So in the back here, we're gonna plug it in. Okay, uh, just like that? Yep, just like that. And you need to turn the power unit on, which is here. There's another button. Oh, that's special. Okay, now, before you turn it's it on, okay. make sure it's on cold. Okay, go for it. No way. Ah, did you let go? 
It went on cold. Okay, so it lasted about one second. And what happened? I tried to click cold and it just stopped. Okay, so this went off, so I think. Right, well that didn't work. We put this on the lowest setting, so we're gonna see if it works this time. Okay, give it a shot. It's working. Hold on, let me see what it's pulling here. It says it's pulling 42 watts, and that can run like that for six to eight hours. Okay, so maybe go up to the next setting, not the heat one, the speed. It's using 75 watts. Are you going up again? Yep. 107 watts and it can last for three hours. How? That's cold air. So go back down to the lowest setting and tick on one of the heat. Okay, so now it's using 168 watts. Did it just go out? Yep. Okay. So I think we just, what does it say? It's got, oh, it says overloading. If you're using a hairdryer, then you need to have it on the lowest setting, probably no heat and just put it on uh, the, you can go on the lowest setting without heat and the fan itself on the on actually the highest and that will last for about three hours well, clearly that's not essential but uh, you know it was just a bit of fun that one so now we're gonna get to the real stuff okay so the first thing we're gonna try that is a bit more serious than a hairdryer is the internet and some lights so what we've got over here in our little setup is we have um, we have the Google Wi-Fi we have the Hue Philips Light Hub and we have a modem router. On top of there, I've unplugged the Sonos speaker because that's not crucial. We have a Philips Hue light as well, LED light. So they are all plugged in together into this down here and they are all plugged into the back of this unit right here. So we're gonna turn it on. It will get a bit of a surge, but let's see because this will give us an internet when we're, uh, when we're in a blackout and a light. At the moment, we have the Google Wi-Fi is booting up, the hub is alive, Green. and the Philips Hue is alive, and the light is on. Now, according to this, it's really not pulling much at all. So we can go for 99 hours, We've got a 100% battery and it's not pulling anything, pretty much anything at the moment. Now, I suspect that'll change. It, they'll have up and downs, but for now, that's excellent. That's guaranteed we can run Wi-Fi in the house. I'm gonna plug in something extra. I'm gonna plug in the Sonos speaker, which is only one of the Play ones, uh, and it isn't drawing, it's not playing at the moment, but let's see what happens when I plug it in. That's powered up, uh, but again, let's have a look on the unit. It's using Pretty much zero power we've got nine to nine hours worth which is really odd but okay we're gonna keep on trucking and we're gonna add some more bits and pieces so we're gonna be plugging in the playstation the skybox the sonos speaker and the tv also got the nintendo switch the apple tv the playstation controllers which are charging the camera and a phone. a phone so all of these are going to be connected at the same time they're going to be connected with those two plugs going directly into these two connections and we're going to see what kind of effect that has and what draw that has because if it can do that even if it's just for an evening when we've got no power then we're sorted it's going to be happy days okay so i'm about to plug them in i plugged the tv in but it's just on standby so that's not going to be pulling many watts at all at the moment but i'm about to plug in all the rest of the devices which are all connected to one plug now i don't know what effect this is going to have but we will find out. It's pulling, well it's a little bit up and down until it stabilizes, but at the moment it's pulling about 42 watts and it's up, down, up, down, all over the place. Not quite sure why it's doing that. I'll probably need to ask the EcoFlow guys on that one. But I guess it's because things are in standby and it needs to stabilize uh, initially. But okay, so at the moment it's saying it can do it. So if I turn on the skybox, and the TV, let's see what effect that has. So the TV is coming on. Oh, we're pulling 70, oh no, 105 watts of power. Ouch. At the moment, but bear in mind we've got everything on. So this is on as well. Oh yeah, the Skybox is on as well. Skybox on, it's, it's setting itself up. We are pulling currently 105 watts with everything that's plugged in here. And there's loads of stuff we actually don't need that's plugged on there. 
uh, plugged in there and it's saying that it can do it for three hours which do you know what if we unplug some of the unessential stuff this is going to be fine for a night of uh, the night of entertainment when there's a blackout and then we'll charge it the next day with solar. Okay, so the TV is now on. As you can see, the skybox has set, reset itself up since the power cut. And what I'm gonna turn on now is the PlayStation. It's pulling 105 watts. It's got, it can do that for three hours is what it's telling me. And let's fire up the PlayStation just to show you as well, the Apple TV is also on. Now we're gonna go over to the PlayStation and that is booting up. PlayStation's on. TV's on, PlayStation's on, phone's on, lights are on, and we are pulling 169 watts at the moment. That's not that bad. It's not that bad. Um, it's got 98% left from what we've been doing just now. Uh, the only downside is that it says we can do this for one hour. So we've got um. one hour's worth of PlayStation. But if I turn the PlayStation off and we just watch TV, you've got four hours, so that's not bad. So I think realistically for something so small, this is a great device. And you know, I'm getting quite addicted to finding out how much power things are pulling. Um, and I've got some other uh, uses for it that I didn't even think of when I first ordered, ordered the product. So really for me, it was all about blackout. Let me show you another idea I've got for it, which will become in really handy for, uh, for photographers, videographers, wedding photographers, uh, anyone that needs something extra in their camera kit. So here it is, it's the studio light, and it's being powered completely by this unit. So let's just see how much power that is using. So it's using about 32 watts. So you can have a mobile studio light, take it outside, even though you've got your normal cable connected to it, with the power supply, and go and use that, I don't know, outside at night time, or if you need a fill-in light or something like that, you can for use it for that shoot. too. For photo shoots, video shoots. And it says that it can use it for anywhere between three and nine hours, depending on what setting you've got it set to. At the moment, this is set to about 40, 30, 40% in terms of brightness, but that's good enough. You know, your shoot should be done in that time. So now we're gonna try something a little bit more, I guess, useful uh, for the emergency again. And that would be the fridge freezer. And then maybe, the big American style fridge freezer uh, because the small just standard freezer is not that big. Okay, so we are now going to plug it into this. Um, now again with a fridge freezer they come on and off in terms of their power and we're going to plug it in. Okay, so we're plugged in. We're about to turn this on. Ready? Uh, nearly. Okay, go for it. You can hear it powering up. So the 151 constant. 133. 133. That's not too bad. I mean, I'm sure it will go through phases again like the other devices, but that's two hours that's going to get you there. So it's not very long. It's not going to get you through the night, but it will get you through a short period of time. So yes, it works, but a little bit inconclusive in terms of not sure how useful that's going to be for you. So let's try just the freezer. All right, so we're using a standard type uh, chest freezer here with it on the top. It's running absolutely fine. I just tried to give it a boost and that blew the fuse. So I'm not quite sure how much of a boost that is or how powerful that is. Um, but at the moment it's running and it's not pulling anything. So it's saying that it's got 99 hours. Now clearly that's not gonna be the case. So inconclusive on this one, but it's definitely running it. It's not blown any fuses. I don't expect it to uh, while it's doing this at this stage. So yeah, that's a good one. Now, I just seen something else in here, which is an air conditioning unit. So let's plug that in and see if that works. Okay, so the aircon is plugged into it. So let's turn the aircon on, Charles, with that switch. Oh, okay. Let's press the yellow button. It's working. Okay, so it's going up. And the reason that's going up is because out here is one of these big units, but it's also powered that up too. What's the power saying, Charles? Uh, it's peaked at once. It's peaked at 180. What? Oh, okay, 199. 205, 242. Wow. It's going up, 240. 50, 60, 300. Okay, so now you see this has changed to some minutes. Ah, there you go, overload, that's it. So that doesn't really work. Okay, that's conclusive. Oh, I didn't see how long we can run it for. It was about 50 minutes. Oof. All right, so we're gonna try uh, one last thing. We are gonna plug the unit into uh, the car cigarette lighter and see if it will charge from the car, because if all else fails and you've got no power to charge it with, 
and you've got no solar because it's raining or it's dark or whatever, then I guess the fail safe would be to plug it into the car to charge it from there. So let's check it out. Okay, so we are gonna connect this, which will be USB-C on one end and the plug lighter on the other. And we're gonna connect into this connection here and one of those connectors there. Let's plug that in. Okay, let's see what happens. How's it looking? It's plugged in. It is, it's charging it. So you can, if all else fails, plug it into your car, into your normal cigarette lighter, plug it in here and it's getting 42 watts. Um, really? Yeah, which is pretty good. It's impressive. Yep, so now let's turn the car on, see what happens. Yeah, 42, 43 watts, 45. It does everything and more that we thought it would. Um, really pleased to get this. I would highly recommend it. I think uh, as an emergency device or even as a tool for part of uh, your photography, videography, uh, sessions that you do it just it takes the cable away it takes the leash away if you like so it allows you to go wherever you want to without having the extension lead or anything else um, this is now charging out the car so really as I said if you've got no uh, if it's not light outside if you're really desperate you need power you can plug it in and charge it from the car as well so it does obviously all of the charging of phones uh, camera batteries uh, iPads uh, all of those kind of things uh, very well and it's a, it's got lots of safety features. So if you want, if you do overpower it or over try and overcharge it or try and draw too much power from it, then it will just switch itself off and trip it, and then it will reset uh, once it's uh, sorted itself out. So great device. Hope you've enjoyed this video. We are loving this product. Going to use it for a lot more things than we thought that we would. A good investment, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. See ya. Hey Charles. Hey Dad. Okay. So, what we got? We have a... Where we are framed. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be plugging in the so... I read what was on it, the Sony. Damn it. <laughs> we're gonna be plugging in the Sony, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy, man. All right. Um. So now we're gonna try and plug in the PlayStation, possibly the Skyblocks. Skyblock? What kind of effect that has and what draw that has? Because if it can do that, even if it's just for an evening. And the TV. Yes, I nailed it! And that's the game! Woo!